Okay, cool. Um, today's topic is advanced paintings on rice paper. Um, there are three common themes in Chinese brush painting. They are bird and flower painting, landscapes, and figures. And I want to talk about the Xuan rice paper. Rice paper in Chinese brush painting is called Xuan paper. Xuan paper is known among Chinese literati as the king of all paper. The traditional craft of making Xuan paper is on UNESCO's cultural heritage site. Um, Xuan paper was first made in the ancient Xuan prefecture, now known as Jingxian County in Anhui province. It is made from blue sandalwood trees. And the good quality Xuan paper has 85% blue sandalwood and a small proportion of rice straw. The traditional process of making Xuan rice paper takes more than 100 steps, including collecting, soaking, washing, fermenting, pulping, sunning, and more. After the raw materials are prepared, craftsmen make a slurry. Then the sheet of paper is collected on a fine screen. The sheet of paper is then placed on a stack of wet papers and then will be dried and trimmed. Shin paper is highly water absorbent. During the Ming Dynasty, Shin paper was so popular that its making process was supervised by the imperial court. About the different types of rice paper. Xuan paper has different types. Xuan paper can be classified into raw paper, sheng xuan, processed paper, uh, shu xuan, and semi-processed paper, uh, ban shu xuan. The sheng xuan has the best ability of ink absorption Shu Xuan is suitable for painting or calligraphy with fine and delicate strokes. Ban Shu Xuan's absorption is between the two. And now I want to introduce a famous Chinese brush painting to look at. This is called the Admonition Scroll. I would like to present these three Chinese brush painting on silk to look at because they are famous and a good example of Chinese brush painting. This one is also called Admonitions of the Court Instructress. There are 12 scenes present in this painting. This is the introductory scene, which I will present the text in an excerpt later. The admonition scroll is one of the earliest examples of a Chinese hand scroll painting. It was for illustrating a poetic text written by poet official Zhang Hua. In, in admonition scroll, it was for reprimanding Empress Jia and providing advice to women of the imperial court. The introduction of admonition scroll uh, is here. This is an excerpt from scene one introduction. In the boundlessness of creation, 
yin and yang first separated out. Scattered qi and flowing substance were molded and shaped. At the time of Emperor Fu Xi, heaven and human were first divided. Thus began the relationship of husband and wife, as well as that of lord and minister. The way of the household is regulated. The plans of the ruler are ordered. A woman's virtue values gentleness. She conceals beauty within and is pure and perfect. Gentle and meek, virtuous and careful, her proper place is in the chamber. When she gets married, the girl arranges her robes and ties up her apron. Respectfully, she prepares the household meals. Solemn and dignified in bearing, with pure virtue, she gazes up reverently. So this scroll is about illustrating the virtuous actions of women and I think it has 12 scenes and this is like from the 11 scene 11 scene 11 is called a lady reflects upon her conduct and this is the text that goes with it therefore I say be cautious and circumspect in all you do and from this good fortune will arise calmly and respectfully think about your actions and honor and fame will await you uh, this is the t scene 12 from admonition school scene 12 is called the instructress it is the scene where the court instructress is writing down her admonitions on a scroll, head bound in concentration, while two ladies walk towards her. The instructress in charge of admonitions fully speaks to all the palace ladies. Yeah, so this is a very famous Chinese. Uh, brush painting. Uh, the artist is Gu Kaiju. He was a Chinese painter and politician and lived from 344 to 406. He was also a poet and calligrapher. He wrote three books about painting theory. There are copies of several silk hand scroll paintings that are attributed to him. One emperor that Gu Kaiju served under was Huan Xuan, who was an enthusiastic art collector. This is the second famous Chinese brush painting. It's called Court Ladies Adorning Their Hair with Flowers. It, it illustrates the noble ladies in the Tang Dynasty. And the artist is Zhou Fang. About this painting, it is a classic in Chinese figure painting, uh, showing the lifestyle of five noble women. They are in the courtyard as spring turns into summer. And you can get a closer look at this painting on Google Art. Some modders, some scholars think that the ladies are painted from the same model. And then also you can note that there is also the custom of making more important figures larger and less important figures smaller. And yeah, once again, it is a classic in Chinese figure painting. And the artist is Zhou Fang. He, oh, I did it right when he 
lived. He was a Chinese painter during the Tang Dynasty. His most popular works feature women of the Tang Dynasty. He accepted Zhang Xuan's painting themes and artistic techniques. He lived in the city of Chang'an, which is today Xi'an. He was a famous religious and character painter. Um, did I add when he lived? I, I looked it up, but I didn't add it. And the last one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have the um, year maybe it would be easier for Western people to know oh. in what era. I like, yeah, I like, like last artist you had years. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. But whenever you have, you can add. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Oh, Tang Dynasty, also those persons. Oh, okay, then it's enough. It, oh, okay. it must be in, in that Tang Dynasty. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I. Okay. Okay. It's good. Thank you. The last painting I want to introduce is The Night Revels of Han Xi Zai. It was painted by Gu Hong Zhong. Um, wait, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, there are five distinct sections of this painting. It represented the lifestyle of the ruling class during that time. It was painted on a hand scroll and divided into five parts. Um, Gu Hong Zhong was sent to spy on Han Xi Zai, a minister of the Southern Tang Emperor Li Yu. One theory is that Li Yu wanted to know why Han Xi Zai refused the role of prime minister. Another theory is that Han Xi Zai would miss the morning meetings. So he wanted to know why. Um, and here, here is a section of it. I don't know the story. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's well, interesting. Yeah, this I don't know this. Very famous. I don't know the painting either. Oh, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I like it too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's just the whole thing. I think it's the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, yeah, shows his night parties, I think, yeah. And then Gu Hong Zhong, the artist, lived around 937 to 975. He was a court painter for the Southern Tang Emperor Li Yu. He also, um, I don't know why the name is different, actually but he depicted the sensuous court life and also depicted the scandalous revelries of Han Xi Zai. And now I want to show a YouTube video for more complicated Chinese brush painting strokes. And this a uh, YouTube channel is Young Travel Art. And I have to share a new one. Oh, sorry. Let me share new. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's 
sorry. Um. Okay, I found it. Okay, so she has a channel about um, Chinese painting and she made a video about those Chinese basic strokes. I um, think it's very useful. Hello, my beautiful artist. What are the three principles of brush movement? How about the basic strokes we didn't cover in my last class? Not sure? That's okay, because today we'll find out and practice together. The three principles of brush movement, speed, pressure, and the direction. Let's talk about speed first. This is something we should always consider when painting. I will show you why speed matters by comparing strokes at different speeds with the same brush, ink, and paper. Here are two oblique strokes, the first one fast and the second one slow. Notice the color of the first stroke. Now compare it to the slower stroke below. Which one is darker? Knowing this, you can play with the color in your painting simply by varying the speed. A couple quick tips when practicing speed. Relax your wrist and don't press too hard. This will ensure your painting is natural and relaxed. Now then, we understand the speed. Let's take a look at the pressure. If you've seen my classes before or have any instructions in chest painting or calligraphy, you will have learned to lift and press the brush. When discussing pressure, it's helpful to break up the length of the brush into thirds. You could press the top third, the top two thirds, of the whole brush in any stroke. Let's compare this amount of pressure using the same method that we did with speed. Two strokes with the same brush, ink, and paper. For this first stroke, I only used the top third of the brush. Just using the top third would be considered a lift. Animal and it's a press. On the second, I used the whole brush. Let's compare. Notice how the top stroke appears blurry on the edges. The second stroke came out more defined and with a darker color. And in Chinese calligraphy, lifts make light strokes and the presses make heavy ones. By direction, I really mean changes in direction. So you could uh, think about it as twists and uh, curves. There are two main types that we will look at rounded curves and uh, sharp curves. The first is a sharp curve. In this sharp curve, I go to the right first. Then, before changing directions, I lift the brush slightly. Rounded curve. This time, after finishing my movement to the right, I don't lift the brush, but rather use the side to paint downwards. The main difference between these two curves is a brush lift when changing directions. Do these three principles make sense? I'm always considering speed, pressure, and the direction when I practice. Okay, now we know how to use the brush better. 
better. Let's move on to more basic strokes. The shiver stroke. Remember the upright vertical stroke? In Chinese, it's called Zhong Feng. Use a quick version of this stroke again and again in any direction. With the right amount of pressure and rhythm, you will wrap a light, jagged edge into the paper. Pay close attention to the shape of the line. It should not be smooth, but not too or curved either. The edges should resemble the dried fibers of a plant. We use this kind of stroke to paint the trees. Blocks. Weaves. And uh, closing. Scrap stroke. This stroke is quite similar to the rough stroke. Just like with the rough stroke, slant the brush and load it with white ink. Then make a scrubbly motion on the paper. Notice how there is no white space in between. This is where it differs from the rough stroke. A good use of the scrub stroke is to paint clouds. It makes the clouds look lighter. Outline stroke. The outline stroke calls for an upright position of the brush. This stroke should be smooth and fluid. They flow like qi in Chinese Kung Fu and with rhythm like in music. I use outline strokes to paint over the pencil sketches in most of my Chinese painting tutorials. They are often used in Gong Bi style. Here is an example of outline strokes used to paint a bird in Gong Bi style. The outline strokes here makes the bird look three-dimensional. Outline strokes are made by lifting, pressing, then lifting. That way, you can vary the width. In Xie Yi style, this stroke is used for natural scenery and the figures. Now you know more basic strokes and the three principles of brush movement. Ready to put your skills to the test? Check out my video on how to paint pandas and the red crown crane. All links are in the description below. See you over in the next class. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Oops. Um, yeah, that's... And then I just included some more examples of my own work, my own work of Chinese brush paintings on rice paper are from when I took the class Ling Nan style painting with Anita Yan Wang. I depict the myth of the dragon and the phoenix in my Chinese brush paintings on rice paper. I sometimes combine Chinese brush paintings with Japanese prints. My teacher work is Anita, her name is Anita Yan Wang, and you can explore her website later. Um, or we can look at it briefly now. Um, Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, maybe look at it later. And then homework. I made 
the homework assignment, use some more advanced brushstrokes and make the subject a common theme in Chinese brush painting. So that's either bird and flower painting, uh, landscape painting, or figures painting. And then maybe try to copy a tutorial. And thirdly, make it contemporary. And that's, <clears throat> yeah, that's my class for today. Can I ask the homework? Uh -huh. You said the subject, uh, a yeah. common theme. That means hua niao or figure or landscape. Yes. But it has to be contemporary uh, scenery or flower or something. Yeah. Yeah, in some way. Or, or if it is. Yeah, if it is figures, it should be the modern people, not, not the ancient people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just try to okay. make it contemporary in any way you can think of. Yeah. Okay. Just look, the artwork would, should have con contemporary elements in it, something. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't. Let's paint something like a, can't see it. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> when will this homework do? When? Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Two weeks to a well, It's fine. It, it, it's just homework assignment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I, I like this. Yeah, I like him. I learned some artists oh, cool. and the paintings. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I like that women. Uh, women what is that? Twelve thing at the main uh, ad admonition scroll, or um. Yeah. What is the word admonition? That what's that meaning? Oh, I don't know yeah. the vocabulary. Admonition means like criticizing someone. Well, no, like it's like you a principal. This is some rules you should obey or something. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, it it is your like manual. It's your school code or something. For women, you got to do these things. Yeah, yeah kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Or you should uh, look up on these idealized um, principles or something. Okay. Oh, thank you. Should I? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.